Good evening, everyone. I'm Makesh Lopinder. It's good having you back with us. Midway through its term, and the Minnis administration has added a new cabinet minister to its count. Taking the oath of office at a brief ceremony at Government House this afternoon was Central Grand Bahama MP Iram Lewis. Our BJ McDermott picks up the story from here. An engineer by profession, Iram Lewis on Monday officially turned in his hat as parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Works for a new one, the Minister of State for Disaster Preparedness Management and Reconstruction, a ministry sparked by the widespread destruction and devastation Dorian left behind some three weeks ago. Following his swearing in, here's what Mr. Lewis told reporters is the first order of business in this Herculean task to getting the affected islands back to some sense of normalcy. Get fully acclimated. Get my full Get a clear understanding. Um, assemble my team. Um, have, there'll be an office in, in Grand Bahama, an office in Nassau, and one in Abaco for operational purposes so that I can see on top of what's going on. We can have a board that's going to be very active, um, very focused, and we'll be reporting on a regular basis to the Bahamian public as to what we're doing. The National Emergency Management Agency will fall under this new ministry. When questioned about the heavy criticism NIM has faced post-Hurricane Dorian, Mr. Lewis said there will be naysayers, but those who will mean well must remain positive. He accepts, though, that ongoing training is key for NEMA. We need to have a, a, a focused approach, see how we can work hand in glove to ensure that, that, that once we, or if we go through another um, serious superstorm like this, that we'll be more prepared. So preparation is key. Pre Preparation, ongoing training, because every experience will be different. You can learn something and get the bill on whatever we learn. Meantime, contracts are being prepared for teams moving into Abaco. And let me be clear, we're going to use all of the Bahamian companies. We're going to make do an inventory of all the machinery that we have in the Bahamas, owned by Bahamians, and use those first. And of course, if the work will become excessive and we need to bring in um, um, other, other help, then we, but we're looking at Bahamian focus first. It's to be a layered, cleaner process, taking into consideration bodies may be beneath the rubble. Reporting for JCN News, I'm Bertha New McDermott. Now, as Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis explained, the new ministry is to be modeled after the Public Hospitals Authority with an executive director and board. The authority will also have the mandate to redesign and rebuild areas devastated by Dorian without government interference. Legislation to accompany the ministry is being drafted and will be brought to Parliament October 2nd. As for its budget, the Prime Minister says that's to be discussed at Cabinet on Tuesday. Meantime, the opposition's dismissing the creation of the Ministry of Disaster Preparedness as an inherent dose of confusion. Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis reasons that this will only fuel more delays and deepen the level of dissatisfaction, anger and frustration among Bahamians. The PLP, he says, does not agree that another layer of bureaucracy with another political head will solve of the myriad of challenges facing the government. Mr. Davis is calling on the Prime Minister to do his job because the National Emergency Management Agency, he said, must be structurally and functionally transformed from a coordination body to a fully resourced corporate sole entity. Well, the Prime Minister's Sunday press briefing also bought the announcement, brought with it the announcement, that is, of a reprieve for East Grand Bahama, Abaco, and its surrounding keys. They're now special economic recovery zones, and that'll be the case for the next three years. As the case with the Over the Hill initiative, these communities are to benefit from tax breaks and incentives and their residents from other means of support. The Prime Minister also announcing a VAT credit of up to 50% on the sale of real property tax, that is, provided the sales immediately followed by material construction, enhancements to the property or use of the purchased property for material commercial activity, a $10 million loan guarantee and equity financing program will also be established. In this case, qualifying Bahamian small and medium-sized businesses will be able to secure up to $500,000 in financing to either restore their businesses or create new ones. The provisional business license program will be extended to all businesses within the zones, and there will be a one-stop shop in Grand Bahama and Abaco. Aside from this, the government intends to extend the bonded items facility, a feature of the Grand Bahama Port Authority.
According to the Prime Minister, foreign landowners in the Family Islands will only qualify for the exemption if their developed properties are up to standard or if they are taking the steps to repair and refurbish their premises to get them back to standard. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.